My next patron question is from Billy, who had a question about the end of a specific period in filmmaking history. I see a lot of people look at Heaven's Gate as the end of New Hollywood. Yes, Michael Cimino's perfectionism went out of control and the budget skyrocketed, which ended up a flop. But I don't think it's solely to blame, as the era was coming to an end with the focus on blockbuster-type films due to the success of Jaws and Star Wars. Where do you stand on this? What Billy is referring to is a time known as the New Hollywood era. This era came about when the old guard of directors was entering retirement and the classic style filmmaking was starting to lose interest among moviegoers, especially the younger ones. Hollywood studios thus began employing a new generation of directors, many out of film school, who brought a different vision to their films that appealed to younger audiences. Even though Arthur Penn was ready in his 40s when he directed Bonnie and Clyde, that's often considered the start of the New Hollywood era. The editing was more energetic, with a heavy influence from the French New Wave, it was extremely violent, and excited younger viewers, with a unique mix of humor with the vibrant personalities on screen. Mike Nichols, the graduate, also from 1967, was similarly well received for its risque material, the soundtrack, and again, the editing choices. Young people also found the story more relatable than most of what was coming out of Hollywood at the time. Eventually, more of these directors started coming in, like Martin Scorsese, Francis Ford Coppola, Steven Spielberg, Peter Bogdanovich, and William Friedkin. While heavily inspired by the classic movies produced by Hollywood in the decades prior, they also put their own spin that allowed their films to stand out. The era is known for the creative freedom given to these filmmakers, although there were still conflicts and disagreements with studio executives. Paramount even almost fired Coppola during production of The Godfather due to disagreements with his filmmaking approach. Several of the films directed by the new Hollywood filmmakers became big hits, which led to greater budgets being given to them, and since they'd proven their success already, they were able to go wild with their productions. And this is something that played a role in the new Hollywood era ending. Billy mentioned Heaven's Gate, and that was certainly a production that became infamous for Michael Cimino's excessive directing style. After his success with The Deer Hunter, he was given carte blanche an $11 million budget by United Artists. This director made a hit Oscar-winning three-hour Vietnam War movie that opens with an extended wedding sequence. He clearly has the magic touch. Well, that magic touch led to Heaven's Gate ballooning to a $44 million budget as he required the sky and clouds to look a certain way and asked sets to be destroyed and reconstructed. Need I mention the constant animal abuse? When the movie was released, it was savaged by critics and a massive flop, and the stories of its production became widely chastised as an example of the unregulated excess that had overtaken Hollywood. Heaven's Gate is thus regarded as the film that marked the end of New Hollywood, but Cimino is not the only acclaimed director who experienced a disappointing film that went over budget and had a hectic production. Martin Scorsese had New York, New York, Peter Bogdanovich directed At Long Last Love, and William Friedkin directed Sorcerer. Friedkin himself felt the tide was turning even before his film was released. Sorcerer opened about a month after Star Wars, and he recalled going to watch Star Wars in the theater and seeing the reaction from audiences. Because of a prior commitment, Man's Chinese Theater had to replace Star Wars with Sorcerer, but because everyone was down the street seeing George Lucas's space epic instead, it did not take long for Sorcerer to be dropped from the theater and Star Wars brought back. Even films that were profitable were seen as examples of director excess. Coppola spent over a year filming Apocalypse Now in the Philippines, where he dealt with several production issues. He infamously had over a million feet of film, which is a lot, and the budget went out of control. Luckily for Coppola, the movie performed well. Steven Spielberg's 1941 is assumed to be a flop, but it was actually financially successful. It just did not come close to the grosses of Jaws and Close Encounters. However, Spielberg has admitted that the success of his earlier movies got to his head when making 1941, and he felt he was unstoppable. The response to that film then humbled him a bit, which is why on Raiders of the Lost Ark, he committed to finishing the movie on schedule and on budget, and hired Frank Marshall as the producer to keep him in check. A major characteristic of the new Hollywood era is how they reflected the mood at the time. Events like the Vietnam War and the Watergate scandal created a certain distrust among the populace, especially towards the government, and that was reflected in several of the movies released during this time. They resonated with moviegoers, but at a certain point, they did start to seek more escapism. Even though Jaws was a critique on politicians prioritizing capitalism over safety, the main reason people went to see it was because of the shark. Star Wars depicts a group of rebels trying to topple a fascist regime, with George Lucas being very open about the political themes of that movie, but people mainly went to see it over and over again because of the fairy tale inspired elements and the whiz-bang action sequences. Movies like Grease and Superman were also huge hits in the late 70s. When the 80s rolled around, what most moviegoers were looking for was something fun. 
When looking at the highest grossing films of the 80s, most of them were fantasy films and light-hearted comedies. So what ultimately led to the end of the New Hollywood era? I think a lot of it can be chalked up to audience taste changing, which is what the film industry has always had to deal with. It's a constant guessing game what movie artists will gravitate towards and when they will shift towards other things. And despite the passion and dedication filmmakers like Friedkin and Chimino were putting into their movies, what they created just did not connect with the movie-going public. And the excess of their productions also led to studio executives taking more control. Thank you for your question, Billy.